Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to episode 18 of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. 18 episodes. It's uh it's been a crazy journey and we're not even close to done yet, guys. Today we're going to be covering the use of the cylinder correction. That's this guy right up here. So this allows you to wrap somewhat around rounded objects without having to utilize the rotary tool. We're gonna to talk about all of this in just a minute, but first, just to get started, uh, here's our artwork, T-Mark plumbing, heating and cooling. So this is what we're gonna be marking today. And we're gonna be marking these stainless steel pint glasses. Now, these aren't powder coated, they're painted. So keep that in mind. I wouldn't copy my settings right out of the video. The coat of paint that these came from the store with are very, very thin. So they're pretty easy to get to. You'll likely need more power if you're working on powder coated stuff. That said, we do project mark tutorials in EasyCAD in other tutorials where we do powder coating and it works fine. So just wanted to throw that out there at the start but let's talk about cylinder correction so what cylinder correction actually does is skews your image kind of like this uh, in order to get it to wrap around an object without being distorted once the final mark is made it's extremely useful especially if you don't need to wrap all the way around your round object like in this case the pint glass we're not doing a 360 wrap we're just trying to get a logo on there and it's extremely fast. It's so much faster than doing it on the rotary. And for a lot of people, this is a great option. Today, we're using the 60 watt M7 SFX laser, and we're gonna be using a 300 millimeter lens. The larger a lens you use, the deeper your depth of field, which means the area in which your laser is actually in focus is gonna be a lot taller than it would be with a smaller lens. The 300 millimeter lens also has a larger dot size. The larger the dot size, the more spread out the power of your laser is, which means you're less likely to ablate. Remember, when we're doing coating removals like this, guys, we don't want to ablate the metal. We just want to remove the coating. So a larger dot size and a deeper depth of field is really going to help us there. All of that said, just because I'm using the 300 millimeter lens today doesn't mean you can't do this with a smaller lens. I've successfully done it with lenses as small as 150 millimeters with no problem. So it may take a little more experimenting with the settings and some higher frequencies on smaller lenses, but it can definitely be done. We're kind of going to be breezing through some of this stuff today because it's stuff we've already covered in the crash course. If you guys haven't already watched the rest of the crash course, I highly recommend you go back to the beginning and start from the beginning so that you can catch up with all of the things we're kind of just going to gloss over today. There is a link to the official playlist down in the description if you need to start from the beginning. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at our settings. Let's just cover these really quick, guys. So we're looking at a speed of 1000 with a power of 30 a frequency of 150, and you can get away with lower frequencies by defocusing when we're doing coating removal. And for you MOPA users, uh, just about everything we do on the channel is with a pulse width of 200 nanoseconds. So just like to point that out there. Our line interval is the standard 0 0.025, and our first fill, see here we're actually using sublayers today, our first fill is gonna be a 90 degree scan angle. So that's just gonna be straight up and down. You can absolutely use bi-directional fill here in order to cut down on your job time. Now we are gonna be taking advantage of Lightburn's sublayer feature here. Again, we talked about this earlier in the crash course, but we've added a second sublayer. And this one, the settings are exactly the same. The only difference here is that this one is going to be a zero degree scan angle. Again, bi-directional fill here is fine. And we're doing this on purpose. The first one is going against the grain of the metal. So all tumblers, pint glasses, all that steel drinkware, the grain of the metal moves from left to right in a horizontal pattern. We're going against that grain first to get most of the coating off. And then with the second fill, we're gonna be going with the grain second to clean it up. And we have that with the grain hatch pattern set up as the second fill because we want to make sure that if we do ablate anything, even a little bit by accident with our up and down, we're covering that back up in the same direction that the grain of the metal runs. So we're doing our 90 degree scan first and our zero degree scan second. And this is barely gonna add any time to the job, guys. As you'll see, this is gonna go incredibly fast. 
Uh, but this is how I generally like to set it up. And I'm only using 30% power today because we don't need to get everything off in one pass. We've got two passes here in order to do a clean removal. Again, my power's a little bit lower than it would be if I was doing powder coat, but you'll have to mess with the settings on your own machine in order to get them just right. So that's the settings, guys. That's the game plan. We've got that out of the way. And now we can actually talk about cylinder correction. First, let's take a look at how we have things actually rigged up. So here guys, I've just got a very basic jig in order to hold this steel pint glass. It's nothing fancy and I do have a download link to it in the description if you wanna to try to download and cut one out for yourself. But you could use anything here, Legos, wooden blocks, just literally a jig taped to your workspace. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is that we get our pint glass center to the Galvo. Due to the nature of how Project Mark works, it works best when our object is centered to the Galvo. And a lot of your breadboards or your work tables aren't going to line up perfectly with Galvo Center. In the rotary tutorial that we just published, we found a workaround for that and we could actually mark it off center. That's not really going to work so well for your cylinder correction. Don't get me wrong, it will work, but it's actively fighting against the distortion correction that we're trying to do with the cylinder correction feature. Whatever you have to do to get your object lined up underneath the Galvo, I recommend you do if you plan on using cylinder correction. For me today, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to draw a simple straight line up and down that I can use to make sure my tumbler is relatively straight and pretty center. From here, it helps to do a frame. So we'll go ahead and hit the frame button and we can just use bounds for now because we really just want to get a good idea of where our graphic is going to fall. Make sure this is going in the area of the pint glass that we want it to before we finalize everything and set our jig into stone. Once we're happy with that, we can come back into Lightburn and talk about what we actually have to do to get cylinder corrections set up to use. So much like the rotary episode that we just finished, we're going to come up to this laser tools area up here. We have our rotary, print and cut, and cylinder correction. Cylinder correction is what we're looking for, so we'll go ahead and click it. We have a couple options in here. First is enable cylinder correction, so we'll go ahead and turn that on. There's only a few settings in here. It's really easy, guys. So the first one, mirror distance, this is going to be the distance from your Galvo mirrors to the object that you're marking. If I'm being completely honest, I'll usually just put in the length of my focal stick or the focal distance of the lens, 420 millimeters for my 300 millimeter lens. But if you wanna be really accurate, you can go ahead and measure. The second one is the object diameter. This is easy enough to get. We've done it a couple times now on the channel. Just go ahead and grab a caliper and measure the object diameter. And if your cylinder is not uniform in shape, make sure that you're taking your diameter from the area of your cylinder that you plan on marking. Since our logo is kind of going in the upper quarter of this pint glass, that's where I'm going to be taking my measurement from. And I get a measurement of 77.13 millimeters. So we'll go ahead and re-enter that here, 77.13, and we can move on. Next, we need to tell Lightburn how to perform the calculation. Just let Lightburn know which way your round object is facing. In our case, it's along the x-axis, so we'll leave that checked. And then we're telling Lightburn whether we're doing a convex or concave surface. Since we're doing a cup, ours is a convex surface. But if you were doing something like a spoon, you would choose concave. Finally, with all of this set up, we can click the show valid boundary button. And what this is going to do is this is actually going to show us how far we can technically get away with with our engraving. I'll go ahead and click OK here to get this out of the way. And we can see that it's added a tool layer which is showing us our absolute limits. These two layers are not what you should be sizing your artwork to. These are how far your graphic can go out from the center before literally falling off the edge of the cup. Since we're not using a rotary tool, we're not able to turn the cup as we're marking. So at some point, the graphic is just gonna fly right off the edge. And that's what these tool lines are telling us. For most tumblers, glasses, things like that, drinkware, I recommend going for a width of about 60 millimeters. If you have a high powered laser or a really, really long lens, you can get away with going larger than this, but I find that this works best for most cases. So we'll go ahead and leave that at 60 millimeters. If you want to, you can go ahead and frame this again, just to make sure that it's gonna fall in the right spot. And if your tools are interfering with your framing, you can always check off the frame option up here in your layers panel or delete them entirely once you've gotten your use out of them, which we can go ahead and do here. And with all of that done, we can go ahead and mark it. As usual, 
it will pull up our framing menu. Down here along the bottom, we can see cylinder correction enabled with our stats, just to make sure that we're doing what we want. And once all of this checks out, you can go ahead and run the job. And that's about it guys. You can check this tumbler out. It looks super clean. Again, it didn't require a lot of cleaning because this was a painted tumbler, not a powder coated one. You'll probably want to hit it with some alcohol and Zep. That's the classic laser everything combo or some LA's awesome, something like that. But as you can see, there's no distortion. Everything looks super duper clean and we didn't have to touch a rotary tool. And that's the best part. That's the big thing here, right guys? So anyway, I think that's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Next episode, I believe we're going to be talking about Lightburn's built-in material testing features, which is something that's been highly requested. So we're definitely going to take a look at that, if not next time, very, very soon. But I'm pretty sure that's coming up next. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me today, and I will see you in the next episode. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. If you got value out of this one, don't forget to smash the like button, let everybody else know the content is good, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time we add an episode to the Crash Course. If you need help with anything at all, there are links to our absolutely 100% free Discord and Facebook group down in the description, right next to the link to the Laser Master Academy, the number one way to support the channel. We absolutely love what we do here, guys, teaching you how to use your laser engraving machines, and we wanna keep doing that. Every episode that we upload to the YouTube channel for everyone for free is thanks to our members over at the Laser Master Academy. If you want to sign up to support the channel, you can find out more over at masters.lasereverything.net. It starts at eight bucks a month. It comes with a bunch of bonus goodies for signing up and it's an awesome community over there. So I hope to see you over there soon. That's all I've got for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you in the next one.